Hey friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my channel. So glad to have you for part two of my series, Putting on an Art Show. I'm trying to show you all the ways that you can put on an art show on a budget because that's what I'm doing. So this week's video was, ooh, this was a doozy and I'm still not even finished making my own frames, but I am showing you how to make these lovely, very simple, recessed slat wall frames. Uh, amazing. I got all of the supplies at my local hardware store. It was all pretty inexpensive. I'm tra uh, framing 12 of these goddesses and I did it for around about $110. So that's amazing. $10 a goddess and that's including the paint and everything. And you can't see, but I'll give you a close up. She's actually got a lovely little shimmer in her recess there so that it just highlights her goddessnessliness. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you enjoy. Um, this video, like I said, was insane to create. I've got just a few days until my own show and trying to do all this and still uh, keep up with my videos and everything. So I've been playing with my power tools all week and getting shit done. So anyways, I love you guys. Glad to have you. Please a thumbs up and a big fat subscribe. It goes a long way for helping me grow my channel. Enjoy. Alrighty, time to get this party started. So, part one, we are going to be creating the frames themselves. Here is a whole bunch of stuff you need. You can pause it or just look down in the description below. I will have a link to my blog post that has everything and a nice, neat, tidy list for you, as well as specs on certain items. First things first, sanding. You wanna get those corners of the slats nice and smooth and even so you'll get a nice good start to your edge as well as go ahead and hit the sides too no splinters before and after what a huge difference now take your first painting and line it up with the edge of your first slat we're going to want to make a mark at the exact length of your painting for just the two sides now take your time when you're cutting. If you don't have a miter saw, you can use a hand saw, no problem. <gasps> More sanding, yay! Now you're gonna wanna elevate your slats so that they're ready to spray paint. Trust me, do not lay them flat on the surface. You really wanna make sure that they're nice and high so that as you're spray painting, they don't really have much to stick to on the bottom, if that makes sense. Go ahead and give them three to four layers of spray paint with plenty of dry time in between each layer. While your spray paint is drying, let's go ahead and cover up and protect those paintings for the next step. So lay your painting out on the piece of parchment paper and trace around the edges. But what you're gonna wanna do is actually cut about half an inch or so inside of the edges. That way you'll have enough space for the tape to overhang and actually stick to the canvas a little bit. Okay, so this is one of those steps that's going to seem a little weird, but just trust me on this, it is totally crucial. What you want to do is before attaching your parchment paper to your painting using the painter's tape, you want to weaken that painter's tape. So what I do is I pull off the strips that I think that I'll need, and I literally just lay them right on my bed sheet and pull it off, and down and up, and down and up, and down and up. Basically. What you want to do is you want a little bit of lint and dust and that kind of thing to stick to your tape so that it's not quite so adhesive because what can happen is you can lay that tape down and it can literally rip the oil paint right off of your painting in big long streaks. It is atrocious. It is horrible. Trust me on this. Weaken your tape first. Okay, now we want to affix our parchment paper to the paintings using the weakened painter's tape. Now this is important that you really take your time on this step, making sure that your edges are trimmed nice and sharp as well as that the edge, the long edge of the painter's tape is lined up with the edges of your paintings in such a way that it does not overhang whatsoever. The problem if it overhangs is that it will wind up getting stuck 
and the glue and stuck in between the edge between the frame and the painting and it will just create a real issue that you're gonna have to use a razor blade or whatever kind of nonsense to try to cut it out or rip it out and you'll have blue tape stuck in there whatever just make sure to take your time go slow on this step tape very carefully Okay, and now we have these beautiful dried, freshly painted slats. And what we're gonna do is make our lives much easier by half hammering in our little tack nails in order to make it that much simpler to affix it to the final painting. I recommend using some pliers for this step because of how tiny the tack nails are. It is damn near impossible not to totally obliterate your thumb trying to hammer those in. If you notice, I have it situated so that it is much closer to one edge of the slat than the other, and that is, of course, because the slat is going to overhang on one side of the painting. Now that the nails are half tacked in place, we're gonna go ahead and put the wood glue on our slats and of course we're going to put it on the opposite side because this is the side that is going to overhang on our canvas and if you get a little drip just like I did it's fine actually you want it to be nice and smoothly laid out you really don't want it to be super thick because especially for this project you do not want glue squishing out over the top and bottom ideally very much because otherwise it's going to wind up getting that blue tape that you put on there and you really do not want that sticking to your painting in a permanent way. So a nice thin little strip of glue just along the bottom on the opposite side of where your tack nails are is absolutely perfect. All right, now's the time to actually affix your slats to your first two walls. So one at a time, you'll be gluing that edge like we did in the last step. And then I want you to line it up very, very carefully with the back of the wood piece that makes up the oil painting, as well as the two sides. And really use your fingers, take your time, feel it out, get it as close and as lined up as possible because later on when we go to use the spackle, you really want it to be very, very tiny, minimal cracks that you're filling in. The spackle should not be a crutch. It should be a teeny, tiny, tiny little accessory that's gonna help your smoothness. And now the next step is basically to do just about all the steps all over again, starting with part one, number one. Basically, you're gonna go through and take your canvas, now that it is a larger size, and go back and measure it again on the next slat. You wanna take your time, be really careful with this, mark it well, cut it well. Trust me, as I said, you're gonna be using some spackle later, but you want that just to be for the tiniest of cracks. It really does not do a lot for big corrections. And this is what you want. Basically, all four of your sides meeting nice and cleanly, and you're basically making like a really shallow box. Alrighty, now we are polishing off and painting the frame. As before, you can check in the links below. I will have a nice list all spelled out for you on my blog. Alrighty, now that the basic frame is built and the glue is all dry, we are gonna wanna clean up our corners and make it nice and smooth, ready for paint. You can see I've already spackled a few of these as well as the tiny little nails that are sticking out. And I left this corner empty to show you how I did this. Now you're gonna want a just a regular package of spackle. If you have special kind for wood, that's good, but we're not using it to construct big areas. so just a little bit of regular drywall spackle will work as well. And you're gonna want a card. I have just this old uh, Goodwill credit card, still good, 
but uh, yeah, I use this for spreading. And you're just gonna kinda lay it on nice and thick and smooth it down with your card as much as you can. You really wanna get in all those corners so that the little cracks basically just disappear. And do the best you can smoothing with this. Now you are gonna be sanding later, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but starting off with some nice smooth edges and not letting it overlap too much is gonna be a great help later on when you go to refine it. Oh boy, more sanding, our lucky day. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your sander. If you don't have an electric one, that's fine. Hand sanding will work just fine for this step. And just start going over all those areas where you had the edges meet. Now, most likely you're gonna to wanna to just go ahead and jump right in with a 220 grit sandpaper. There's a small possibility you might feel the need to start off with something a little bit rougher, but this spackle is not super sturdy stuff. So I honestly would not start off with anything lower than 120. Now use this to get all of the edges on each side of the corner and try to keep that corner a nice point while still making sure that you don't have any splinters or anything coming loose. Next, I like to go ahead and refine what I just sanded with an even finer grit, like a 220 hand sanding was a really nice way to polish things off. Then you're gonna wanna get a lightly damp sponge and just go ahead and get all that dust and stuff off so it doesn't get stuck in your paint in the next step. All right, and now we have one seriously smooth frame all ready to paint. Now, for this, I like to bust out a smaller brush because that's going to really help prevent any drips from coming down. It's going to be way more easy to control this nice tiny size 8 or 10 flat brush for those little teeny edges. And then I've got my regular 2 inch house paint brush for the sides. And I'm not going to bore you with actually watching me paint this entire thing, but I did want to give you a little tip. I like to do two to three coats of paint and cleaning a paintbrush can take a really long time. So I learned a great little trick where if you just wrap it in an old plastic bag or a saran wrap with a rubber band, then your brush will stay nice and dry in between coats and it's good for about up to 24 hours or so. All right, check that out. That is one beautiful made with love frame. All righty, folks. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something. And if you did, hit that subscribe button, pretty please. Also, make sure you check out the rest of my putting on an art show on a budget video series. This has been amazing creating this. I had a really successful art show and I didn't spend a lot of money doing it and I would love to show everybody how to. Love you guys. See you soon.